Welcome to the Zero to Five Million Dollar Podcast. I'm Sean Finder, and I'm with my host, Ollie Whitfield. This show is brought to you by AutoClose, a vanilla soft company. Ollie, why don't you uh, tell the audience what our discussion will be about today? You're getting put on the spot, I'm afraid. So this is one of my favorite things to do to you, give you no prep and just ask you difficult things that you won't have thought about before. So this is the five leaders or five companies or a mixture of both. It's your preference that you learn from and that you follow. Sean Finder edition. So no time no time to think about it. Number one, who's the big business person that you follow and, take, and have taken inspiration from? So I'm going to start off from the top, just off the top of my head with uh, David Cancel from Drift. Um, I'll tell you why he's the first person that comes to mind is back in uh, 2017 when I was starting AutoClose. Oh, you met him, uh, didn't you? Is that I was, that's I was, in, you Toronto, there? I was okay. in Toronto at an event that we were sponsoring and David Cancel was speaking. And this one Drift was very early on. It might have been 2016 even. And uh, I, I, I heard him say something in his, in his talk about making sure that you make all users pay for your platform. So this is when freemium versus free was – that debate was all up in the air and I was like, okay, so like don't do 14 day trials, but he was all about charging something, you know, so don't give away for free. It could be a dollar. It could be $10. It could be, but charge something. Cause if they're invested, then they'll give you more feedback. They'll help you with your, your, um, your platform with mistakes and all the other stuff that you want with your thing. So I met with them right after and I asked them, so you're saying I'm starting a new platform auto close called auto close and he's like sean here's my words of advice charge whatever you want even call your first 50 people and ask them how much they're willing to pay so that's what i did i actually called the first 50 people of our platform i said hey here's a demo here's what we built like what's this worth to you and some people would be like well you know right now you know things are tight i can only pay probably 10 bucks 10 bucks a month okay you got it next person be like no, you got about a $50 a month platform. Perfect. You got it. Next person be like, honestly, I just have no use for it. I'd probably give you a dollar. Okay, well, you have it for a dollar. And I actually did that for the first 50. And what happened was I got all my feedback for development and prioritization from those 50 people. So it was a, it was one of the things that really resonated with me early on was to charge something, have them emotionally financially invested into your company. So the first person that I'm going to mention today was and is David Cancel with Drift. Is that um is that hinging on the validity of his of his advice to you and how well it works or is that like about who else he is because since uh well I'm picturing roughly when that would have been his company's gone insane since then. So is it is that partly about that too? Well, he was also very successful with HubSpot before he was even with Drift. Um, so he always had good content coming out and different stuff. And seeing him in person was a different thing. But, you know, his his mindset and and the thing was when we when I first met him, he was actually coming here just to really get Drift off the ground. They weren't a very successful well, I mean, they were just a startup at the starting at that point. But then if you saw that hockey stick, how quickly that thing went up, I mean, you knew he knew what he was doing. He's done it before, he was gonna do it again. And you could just, just the way he presented himself um, was really fascinating. It's something that I looked up to um, because I was early on. I was, you know, I was, I was three years into my first business, starting my second. Um, so kind of at a stagnant point in my first business where like we couldn't really scale that hockey stick like he was doing, but he gave a lot of different um, feedback and opinion. And we reached, I reached out to him a few times on, on, on LinkedIn after that, asked him similar questions and he always had good feedback. So that's why he's one of those guys that I, I do mentor just because early on he was a, a big advocate, um, but also someone that provided a lot of very valuable information. For a company, you know, when we're when you're bootstrapped, it's you you're gonna make mistakes, but you want to make as little mistakes as possible, or else you're gonna run out of money. So this was one of the ones that we didn't make a mistake. It also got our first 50 people that were invested in also promoting our business. Um, but got you know our, our feet wet with making some revenue and testing our payment systems and our payment processors and all the other stuff. Cool, good stuff. I uh, like. I think stuff like that's worth its weight in gold. You don't often hear how to get twenty customers. You always hear like 
how to change your pricing when you've got a thousand customers and how to go from a million and beyond. So that stuff is um, not talked about enough, especially by people who are in such big companies by him. So that's a good one. Who's next? What company? What person? So I'm going to do a combination. Uh, the company's HubSpot, um, but Darmesh and Brian Halligan. Um, I would say following-wise, content-wise, Darmesh. Um, I don't know if you guys are following him right now, but he's talking. He's starting yeah. a new chat GPT thing, um, and he's providing a lot of cool video. Yeah, look cool. He's putting a lot of pr- cool content. He was on Product Hunt with it, and he always um, he's always on LinkedIn. You know, as a CEO, you you don't see many of the big top CEOs, you know, putting good content, but or they have people writing their content for him. But you, I actually feel like it's really Darmesh writing his comments and building his um, all the stuff on social. So he provides a lot of great content on productivity, how to increase, how to test, um, operational. So he's been a, a very someone that I've also followed. Um, and as you guys know, I, I was at um, well, that you guys don't know, but I was at the inbound uh, conference when I first probably 2015 and HubSpot was another one. You know, they were, they were, they were successful then, but just to see how quickly they skyrocketed, got that hockey stick up, started going after Salesforce, started implementing new things, adding new features and seeing how they brought all those people to that event in Boston was great. So for me, I always, I always look up, you know, a lot of people look up to these influencers and we've talked about this many times on, in, on link. I always looked up the people that have been there, done that, you know, and these companies like HubSpot, these companies like Adrift, some of the other ones I'll mention are really, really successful companies. And what they've done in their business is really successful. So Darmesh is another person I would definitely follow, um, especially if you're into that AI stuff right now, he's posting almost daily new stuff and he's testing cool new things. Um, so definitely on the top five list uh, and top three list for me on people I follow for content. Yeah, they're a good one. You can't really go wrong with any HubSpot. But what I find almost more impressive than how big they are, what like good tools that they have, how many different wings of HubSpot there actually is, it's actually way bigger than most people even are aware of. It's often um, like the mark of a good boss is how many of their team become something good as well. Like how good can you become you know, should you progress in your career? Have you been given the tools, the right skills and that kind of stuff? The amount of early HubSpotters who have gone on to become something else, like you just said, David Cancel, who he was there. I'd forgotten about that, but he was there quite early. Or we had yeah. uh, Peter from Databox. He built the agency program. I think he was like the first sales rep there or very, very early on. They've gone on to build cool companies that are very successful too. And that's a mark of the people who were there at the time obviously had to arm them with and help them and guide them in some kind of way, otherwise they would never have done that. Yep. So uh, I, I find that equally, if not more impressive. So that's number two. Are you saying that's three as well? Is, is that Brian Halligan no, too? No, I'm going to say, I, I would say number three, I'm going to go with his Mark Benioff, Salesforce. Um, you know, don't have to say too much about that. He he invented the CRM game. Um, he's been an innovator, um, someone that really knows how to run a business. Uh you know, he's, he's, he just listening to him. I, I listen to, you know, CNBC, the Squawk Box and all these other things. He's always with Jim Cramer. I always listen to his talks. And he's just a very intelligent guy who's really, um, you know, built the category and started, started how other companies are building now new categories. So um, he's another guy I follow. Now, he's not one of those people that post a lot of stuff on LinkedIn, et cetera, et cetera. But he's one of those guys I listen to his talks. I listen to a lot of his talks on TV. Um, when I'm not during, on meetings, I always have a TV going with, you know, CNBC listening to the market, the economy and, you know, the, the different businesses and, uh, and just an overall very intelligent guy. Um, so I don't have too much more to say about the contents pa- aspect, but you have to respect what Salesforce has done to the entire SaaS community, but also what he's done to that CRM category. Yeah. I don't know if there was others before or did it better than him but they're probably the best that i can think of in terms of a proper SaaS that has built a marketplace yeah um particularly b2b like um we know people who have made shopify apps same sort of thing that's kind of a marketplace is kind of a group of that like built off of the economy of shopify and there's other ones that are, you know loads to go on about but that's probably the only one in our space or well, at least the biggest and probably the best one that i'm aware of where Building a Salesforce app, I know it costs you a lot of money to even be on the marketplace, but there's that much business there. Yeah, the many companies exist purely with that. Uh, that that amazes me, which is 
pretty special. That's, you know, that's a lot of money and a lot of companies and a lot of people and a lot of everything going on at the same time. That's insane. So, yep. um, so that's a good one. So number four, and this is a little bit out of the box, um, not a SaaS company, but I'm going to go with Howard Schultz from Starbucks. And the reason why I'm going to say that is um, coffee's been around forever. But what he did was an absolute game changer by being able to find a reason and build a coffee company that he charges double what the average coffee costs, but gives you that experience. Um, That's one thing. Two, he built a company that people think he sells coffee. Starbucks does not sell coffee. Starbucks is in the real estate industry. Because they have all this real estate, all these corner, all this real estate all around the world, which they make a ton of money off of. So he's built not only a a certain brand of coffee for a certain clientele, but he's also built a retail portfolio. Um, And, you know, just, you know, just going from uh, one, you know, one shop in, you know, Seattle, I believe it was to having revenue of $32 billion in, uh, in, in 2022. Um, he's done a tremendous job um, growing that business, but really almost building a coffee category, even though coffee's been around forever. So I uh, I do want to give a shout out to Howard um, because he is one guy I do follow just because uh, it's a little bit different than the SaaS, but he was something that was an innovator, um, a good thinker, strategic thinker, and built something and just took something that was already done and made it better. What I take from them is, the like Instagrammable effect of I've got a Starbucks. Let me take a picture of it because it's a Starbucks. And why is that a phenomenon? And why does it, why do people do that on mass? It, it's yeah. almost now like laughed at because it's so popular. Yeah. It's so common. Anybody gets their name on a cup and, and it's a Starbucks. You're like, Oh yeah, gotta take a picture of it because it's that because they've made it look cool. They've made it look pretty. It's interesting design. It's not just like a, uh, you know, a takeout mug that you can buy in the store that's not got anything on it that's relatively unsexy and not interesting to look at. So I take that from it. But what what can you apply, and what do you try and sort of listen to for from from Henry that you can apply into your own work? Because as you said, pretty different markets, but I, I can get what you're talking about. You know, the, the scaling. Um, you know, not scaling too quickly. Also, he has a portfolio of companies of of, of coffee shops that. Even if he has 100, if 80 are doing well and 20 are doing bad, he's still a profitable company. So kind of looking at how he diversifies, where he diversifies, where he chooses to put his locations and where they put their locations, where they don't allow their their locations. Just a very all overall strategic thinker on exactly where he wants that brand. That's been really what's resonated with me. Nice. All right. Who's next? Number five. And this is, you know, obviously a not as well known as the other four, um, but he... He is more in line with what I've been in that kind of zero to eight figure kind of SaaS company is Jason Lemkin. I'm at Saster. He uh, he provides a lot of content on private companies, public companies, what the going your CAC should be, your ACV should be, how you should compensate people. So the different things that are inside the business um, he's involved in, and he provides a lot of great content on what your valuation should be and all the different things that you need to look at as a CEO. Whereas the other four people I mentioned are more the innovators, strategic, bigger, um, I call them legends. Um, Jason Lemkin's more of a, you know, a, a person like us, you know, same thing as us, no one, no different that is just providing us with valuable content that we can learn from. Um, because we need to keep learning and it's, it's tough to learn, you know, when a company's doing 33 million, $3 billion, um, it's better to learn from somebody that has those companies that are doing zero to 10, 10 to, to 50, 50 to hundred. And that's where Jason comes in. So he does provide a lot of content. He has his own conference every year. Um, and he would be number five on my list on people that I personally follow just to get extra value and content. Them, I can't vouch enough. Um, I don't know if it's still on this or not, but they have um, the SAS University, which I think was on Mighty Networks. You, yeah. You've got to listen to it. You've got to, got to, got to go on it. I like, I can't vouch enough. It's not like you've got to be a founder or you've got to be trying to build your own software company or anything like that. If you just work in a company that has any resonance to this type of market, you can literally get the playbook millimeter by millimeter and it's not like you have to scale the same way that he did it's not really like that it's done in a way of helping you get 
what should happen and why and what are the repercussions for or against. So for instance, there's a, I think it's a zero to one million course, which I've finished and I go back to quite a lot because it's so good. They'll tell you, for instance, when is a good time to hire a first sales leader and when is not? Mm-hmm. And what should you do and what should you look for and where should that person come from? And what happens if you get that a little bit wrong or you can't quite find the right person? Like, it's like he's lived every possible situation and written it down yep. in, in that much detail. Or you're in a lead rich environment, therefore do this with your marketing leads and have this done with your first sales rep who's inbound. Yep. All of the things you could possibly think of. It's honestly unbelievable. Um, yep. I go back to it all the time. So that their stuff is brilliant. I don't really do the podcast very much because it's much more kind of the valuations and, and the rounds and those things like you you probably be a bit more interested in if you're looking for an exit and scale. But in terms of how to build their, their courses and stuff are unbelievable. Perfect. Well, I do want, this is a great episode. I, I do want to thank everyone for joining us today. It's been a, a, a fun time. I'd also recommend anyone, that, if, if there's anyone that you think that we are missing in that list of five that you think um, should be mentioned, make sure you let us know or also let us know if you want us to bring any of these people onto our podcast. Um, if you have any thing else just you know obviously dm um, myself or ollie thank you for everybody listening if you enjoyed the show don't forget to give us a five-star review wherever you're listening from and subscribe so you don't miss the next show thank you again and see you soon